Okay. So rational functions. We continue with rational functions. So we looked at case one. So the numer uh, degree of numerator was less than the degree of denominator and we had a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Now we're gonna look at the case two. So for case two again, the degree of numerator is equal to the degree of denominator. So then you can get the horizontal asymptote by taking the ratio of the leading coefficients. So if you have, let's say, ax plus b over cx plus d, if you have such a function, okay, then it has a horizontal asymptote at, so degree one, degree one, equal degrees, then you take the leading coefficients, the ratio of the leading coefficients, a over c, is the horizontal asymptote. Let's say you have this example, okay, so f of x equals 3x plus 5 over x minus 1, so degree 1, degree 1. Then you take the uh, ratio of the leading coefficients, 3 over 1, that gives you 3. So y equals 3 is the horizontal asymptote for this example. Now we are going to sketch this graph. 2x minus 2, 3x minus 2 over 2x plus 5. Okay, so we will get x intercepts, y intercept, vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote, and if necessary, we are going to do positive and negative intervals. Okay? x intercept. So what is it? 2 over 3. You take the 0 of the numerator. So that gives you 2 over 3. What is the y-intercept? So you make x 0. Negative 2 over 5. So, negative 2 over 5. Vertical asymptote? You take the zeros of the denominator. So, 2x plus 5 equals 0. If you do that. So, you get negative 5 over 2. So, n uh, you have a vertical asymptote at negative 5 over 2. Horizontal asymptote? So degree 1 over degree 1. They have the same degree. You take the ratio of the leading coefficients. So you get 3 over 2. Okay. So let's put those on the graph. Negative 5 over 2 is like 2.5. x equals negative 5 over 2. So horizontal asymptote, 3 over 2 is 1.5 we have x intercept 2 over 3 it's less than 1 somewhere here and y intercept negative 2 over 5 somewhere here if you have a function like ax plus b over cx plus d so you have a linear over linear okay those graphs are going to look like this. So the actual the one that you learned in grade 11 is, is in this form. Okay? Ax plus b over cx plus d. So maybe you haven't noticed it, but let's say, you know, you had 2 over x minus 3 plus uh, 5. Let's say you have this, right? So last year you learned how to do this. So there is a horizontal asymptote, uh, I mean, vertical asymptote at 3, x equals 3. Uh, you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 5. 
and you say okay there's a transformation three units right five units up right and vertical st uh, stretch by a factor of two but actually if you had the common denominator here let's see what you get okay so you have 2 over x plus minus 3 plus 5 times x minus 3 if you expand this you get 5x minus 15 plus 2 minus 13 over x minus 3 as you see actually they uh, the, the, this one and this one are the same thing right it is in that form ax plus b over cx plus b form so if the equation is like this you can sketch it without doing positive and negative intervals because you know that they always will look like this okay two branches in opposite corners either this or this okay so having said that here i'm not gonna do um you know we, we don't need to do uh, the factor table because see there's x intercept here y intercept there you know that the branch is gonna go like this okay and the other branch again here next question how would you get write the equation of such a graph okay so when you look at it again it has two branches so you know that it is going to be in the form of ax plus b over cx plus d okay Now actually we can use uh, the vertical asymptote, a horizontal asymptote, and x-intercept, and any other point that has integer coordinate to, to come up with A, B, C, and D. For example, you have a, a, a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. So then what can you say about the denominator here? How would how would you have x, uh, x equals to the vertical asymptote right if you have x minus 3 in the denominator correct okay how about the numerator okay so it looks like we figured out c and d already okay by doing this how about horizontal asymptote see it says y equals 2 is the horizontal asymptote hmm how, how I would get horizontal asymptote of 2 if I have 2x here correct because they have the they have the same degree ax plus b over cx plus d they have degree 1 over degree 1 so the leading uh, ratio of the leading coefficients here is it needs to be 2 so that I can have a horizontal asymptote at x equals 2 as y equals 2 okay so we figured this part so the only thing uh, uh, unknown looks like b actually you could also come up with b if you had an integer x intercept but in this case you don't okay so what can we do we can just pick a point that has integer coordinates sub in this to find an un un unknown let's say you know we see here four and three okay that has integer coordinates this 4 and 3 or 2 and 1 okay that's a point with an uh, with integer coordinates so pick one of them doesn't matter which one okay if I pick 4 and 3 4 and 3 okay so 3 equals 8 plus b over uh, 4 minus 3 is 1 so you get 3 equals 5 plus b so b equals negative 5 if you solve it from here then this equation is 
2x minus 5 over x minus 3. You can also check your uh, x intercept. Okay, so this is the equation that we came up with. So based on this, the x intercept has to be located at 5 over 2, which is 2.5. And yes, our x intercept is at 2.5 here. Okay, now we are going to have a few graphs. Um, based on case one and case two, okay? Example, a few more examples. Sketch the graph of the following function. f of x equals x squared minus four over x squared plus two. All right, factor it first, x minus two, x plus two, and denominator is not factorable. Okay, x intercepts. Again, we look at the zeros of the numerator. What do we see? Two, negative two, okay? Two and negative two are the x-intercepts. Next, we find the y-intercept. We substitute zero for x. So if you go to the original question, if you substitute zero for x, you get negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. So 0 and negative 2 is the y-intercept. Vertical asymptote. You check the zeros of the denominator, right? Because a number over 0 gives you undefined. Okay, so can you make denominator 0? x squared plus 2. What do you get from here? So you get x squared equals negative 2. Then you square anything, can you get a negative number? Not possible, right? It's not possible. So, no vertical asymptote. Horizontal asymptote? So now, Check the degree of numerator and denominator. Degree of numerator is two. Degree of denominator is also two. So they have the same degree. Then how do we get the horizontal asymptote? We take the ratio of the leading coefficients. So we get one over one, which is one. Y equals one. Okay, so we can also do the factor table here. So zeros of numerator is negative 2 and 2 and no zeros are coming from the denominator. So in the factor table we're going to put x minus 2, x plus 2. Okay. Well, I don't even need to put x squared plus 2 because x squared is positive. Correct. When you add 2 to it positive number plus a 2, it is another ne positive number. So x squared plus 2 is positive at all times. Okay? If I put it in the factor table, it's going to be positive at all times and it is not going to affect the sign of the function. I mean, you can still include it, but if it is all positive again, so you don't have to include that, okay? If it is positive all the way. If it is negative, you have to. But if it is positive, you don't have to. Okay, so do the factor table. So what do you get? Positive, negative, and positive. So let's draw the horizontal asymptote. Y equals 1. Put the x-intercepts, 2 and negative 2. Y-intercept, negative 2. 
Now let's follow this factor table. When x is less than negative 2, function is positive. When x is less than negative 2, so we have to stay up above the x-axis. And make sure you use this horizontal asymptote. When x is between negative 2 and 2, the function is negative, so it's going to stay below the x-axis. When x is greater than 2, function is again positive, it's above the x-axis. Okay, let's look at the next one. Example two. X intercept, Y intercept, vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote. X intercept. You check the zeros of numerator, which is zero. So zero, zero is the X intercept. If you have 0, 0 for x-intercept, that is also your y-intercept. Don't forget, right? Because to get the y-intercept, you have to substitute 0 for x. 0 over a number is a 0. So you also have y-intercept at 0, 0. Now, uh, the vertical asymptotes. So you have three factors here, right? x equals 3. x equals negative 2 and x equals 1. Well, so when you look at this, this denominator, you have x minus 3, you have x plus 2 as factor, you have 1 minus x. As you see, this uh, variable, like the high, uh, with the highest exponent, has a negative coefficient, okay? Actually, this may create some problems when you are doing uh, the factor table. Also, you know, if we had uh, another degree, if they had the same degree, then you are calculating the horizontal asymptote, it may also create some issues to you. So I certainly recommend you to factor this negative one, okay? And then you get x minus three square, x plus 2 square x minus 1 so you have this negative sign here correct but never keep it in the denominator move it up okay now horizontal asymptote degree of numerator is 1 degree of denominator 2 2 1 5 so degree of numerator is less than the degree of denominator, you get y equals zero. Now do the table. You take the zeros of numerator, zero. Denominator, you have three, negative two, and one. Put them in order. So negative two, zero, one, and three. Okay, so let's place the factors. So, you have negative x. So I certainly recommend you to separate those. I write it as negative sign and x. Because if you keep it as negative x, then you know you have a, we have a pattern. So we place the zero and we put negative before the zero and positive after. If you write it as negative x, so you cannot follow that pattern, but then you're going to have a positive before and negative after the zero. Okay? Therefore, I certainly recommend you to separate this, write as negative 1 and x. Okay? So, x minus 3 square. Hmm. It is positive at all times, correct? And then what did, what did I say with the previous example? If it is positive all the way, you don't even need to include it in the factor table. So, I'm not going to take it. 
same thing with x plus 2 square it is positive at all times you don't need to include it in the factor table okay but of course you are taking the zeros the zeros are here for sure but the, when you're writing the factors you don't need to take because they are positive at all times so now then i'm going to write x minus 1 here so negative sign is negative at all times x is 0 at 0 negative before that positive after x minus 1 is 0 at 1 negative before positive after now you have negative negative positive negative and negative okay so we have vertical asymptotes at x equals 3 negative 2 and 1 horizontal asymptote at y equals 0 okay and uh, now x intercept and y intercept so we have this 0 0 and now we can sketch okay so you have so when x is less than negative 2 you have to draw something negative below the x-axis when x is less than negative 2 you have to sketch something below the x-axis so here when x is between negative 2 and 0 so function again negative you have to draw something below the x-axis When x is between 0 and 1, function is positive. So you have, you have to stay above the x-axis. Between 1 and 3, function is negative. Some, like a parabola, but not exactly, right? We have to, you know, we make use though or use of those vertical asymptotes. You have to stay in the negative part. And finally, when x is greater than 3, again, function is negative. You have this. 